Let's get educated. That's why we're here, to bring you the stories impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses. It's time for a little education. Hello, welcome everyone out there in internet land, I guess. I'm Katie Patrick, joined as always by David Fiorazzo. And Hello. It's, it's Monday and yes. we're live on Educated. So welcome to everyone who's watching us on Facebook welcome. And, and Rumble. And if on you're Facebook watching this later, I'm still going to wave to you. Now, as always, if you could uh, light up the chat for us the whole show, that'd be nice. Start off, tell us where are you from? Some of you are repeat offenders. That's a good thing. Uh, but some of you, hey, this may be your first time tuning in. So welcome to you. And David. Katie. Before we kick our usual things off here, I want to know what happened this morning on Worldview Matters because it it was a good one. Yes, great guest. It's, it's going viral already. Um, Jan Markell, Olive Tree Ministries and Understanding the Times Radio was my guest. And we talked about what's been going on over the last several months in Israel. We talked about biblical prophecy, uh, worldview, of course, on Worldview Matters. And um, she phrased it very interestingly, uh, what's happening recently. She perceives it as demons have, demons have been unleashed. And uh, as far as greater evil that we've ever seen in our lifetime. So very interesting conversation with Jan. We also talked about the top 10 Bible prophecy stories of 2023. If you want to subscribe, you can get an email every Friday. That's worldviewmatters.tv. And we would love to see you this Thursday night at the Freedom Project headquarters in Appleton, Wisconsin, if you are in the Wisconsin area. Um, I'll be talking about my book, Assault on the Image of God. Of course, there will be many copies available Scott Shera is going to be here. Um, the woman who created the cover, designed the cover, uh, she will be here, and hopefully you. And we will be streaming online on, the, on this, where we're streaming right now, on the Freedom Project Facebook page. That's this Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central Time, so tune in for that as well. Yeah, so you have a little bit of time if you need to get your airplane tickets <laughs> or if you are going to drive. Come see us. And if you're Lorna, hi Lorna, if you need to drive from Canada, then you know you need a little bit more preparation time. Well, back here in the States, though, uh, college students in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., were asked whether or not, uh, what, th here's your options. Would you rather, I like the would you rather questions, would you rather have a daughter who makes sex videos or a son who supports Donald Trump? Now, what? can you guess how these college kids in Washington, D.C. may have answered? Hmm, David? All right, let's talk about this. So... What's what's the issue with MAGA all of a sudden, right? So the, yeah, there's the headline, brainwashed college kids would rather pimp out their daughters than have a MAGA son. So before we get into the details on this, this is Washington, D.C., apparently, college students there. Um, we've got a video to watch, and we want your responses if you're following us live on Facebook or on Rumble. Watch this. We'll come back. We'll talk about it. Katie and I will. But we're asking OnlyFans daughter versus MAGA son. Which one did you rather have? OnlyFans daughter. OnlyFans daughter. OnlyFans daughter for sure. I have to go OnlyFans daughter. Like OnlyFans is kind of bad for women, but like the MAGA son is going to treat them worse. I think women should be able to do whatever they want, and if that's a financial decision they take, then that's fine. Yeah, it's kind of foul, but yeah, they can give me money. You know who else has a uh, sex tape out there? Who? Kim Kardashian. She's a billionaire. That's true. Like, I dated this guy, and, like... He was a secret MAGA? Yeah, low-key. And I, like, came to discover that as time went by. And, like, that is hurting women. Like, that was hurting me more than if I had an OnlyFans account. Yeah, it's all... I think it's all mind control. It's all people have been completely brainwashed, especially... These are college kids I'm talking to. They talk to their teachers every day. They're trying to tell them the, certain ways they're supposed to be, certain ways they're supposed to think. And it's no longer, you don't protect the younger generations. You don't protect your children. That's not what's important. It's, it's, the, it's the dollar. And something like that, where you're supposed to have a little bit of modesty out there. Modesty's dead. OnlyFans has killed it. So, And these kids are completely, completely brainwashed with it. They're, they're, they don't think OnlyFans is a problem. They don't think OnlyFans is something to deal with. They think it's something that they're going to be dealing with for the rest of their lives. Okay, so that's yeah. the Daily Caller's Joel Gibbons, who was doing that Man on the yeah. Street yeah. interview. And now, David, here's the thing. His, what is the his thing? problem was he was probably interviewing all college students who were also like students of economics. 
Because, they, you know, all of them, they were looking at it from an economical standpoint, oh, right? right. Oh. I mean, OnlyFans, you could make money on, right? Um, if your son likes Donald Trump, then, I mean, what's that going to get you? And according to that one girl who was dating a guy who low-key uh, was like Donald Trump or whatnot, um, it literally then hurt her. So we're doomed. So it's funny and sad at the same time, isn't it? And college kids, some of them are so sheltered and naive. But I want to read a quote from this um, this article and along the lines of kids being completely uh, brainwashed. It's a sad video, funny video. Some girls are a little worried about their boyfriends trying to trick them into becoming MAGA kids. Um, so only fans. That's this is this is the the, the uh, issue here, the debate here. It says. Um, that it is unfathomable that people would rather pimp out their daughters, which is the headline here, than have a child who supports Trump. But that's how crazy and polarized that's, the media and the left and the Democrat Party and the Marxist in America have, and the education system have done a very good job of dividing and really brainwashing these young people. Mm -hmm. Well, and this is where we are demonstrating the, oh, this is mm. an issue where now we're all about the girls and empowerment and femaleness yep. and they can do what they want on only fans and it's their life and their body their choice all of that rhetoric but then as soon as we start talking about like oh high school sports and letting boys be in the sports then all of a sudden it's like no you have to let transgender rights and now women go out the door so they're talking out both sides of their mouths they don't understand that what they're doing is illogical they only care apparently about Kim Kardashian and how they would rather have you know Kim Kardashian became successful, so that's oh my okay. Goodness. But that evil Donald Trump guy, ah, the whole idea—you just triggered me. The whole idea of reality, <laughs> I triggered you. and I got to put reality in quotes. Reality television. Think about this, guys. For decades now, we've, we're watching mindless. I don't want to call it entertainment. It's it's a distraction, of course, but cameras following people around in their daily lives. Do you think they're acting normal or do you <laughs> think they're trying to put on a show for their audience? The narcissists that are being followed around with cameras. I mean, that's this is reality television, yep. but people get famous doing this. So that's the, that's this narcissistic society. Where, remember that college course I, I said it should be called Narcissism 101. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, so he said it's like a woman's right. That's the right of a woman to make money. That's the right of a woman to empower yep. themselves. That's their idea. But I want to go over to Facebook and see who's chimed in. I want to say hi to, to Luz, Elena. Also, Lorna, of course, God bless you. Thank you for being such a faithful fan and, and uh, friend of ours uh, over on Facebook Live. I'm, I'm on Rumble, too, Rumble Live. We're trying to, I think I've got an internet issue. Of course, we always have there. an internet issue. Yeah, but K Katie, this is just, <clears throat> it's just, it's, it's, I don't even want to use the word entertainment uh, when you talk about some of this reality stuff and talk about some of these debates. Kids are just so, and anything against MAGA, right? Yeah. Anything, that's how good of a job, and I mean evil, Mm -hmm. That's how good of a job the media and the left has done the, the anti-American, anti-Christian, those in America. That's what how good of a job they've done and in programming so many in the younger yeah, generation. Yeah, and this has been in, I mean, decades in the making. This is not a, a new phenomenon as much as you, if you like Donald Trump, good for you. If you don't, good for you. But Trump is just kind of a part of this whole evolution of what they've been doing to dumb down the kids, to get the kids to be lazy, to have the kids not think for themselves for decades and decades and decades. And then <laughs> they're feasting on what they've planted at this point. They're reaping what they sow. Have kids if we want to be a farmer All right. term. Um, Deadspin. I don't know what that is, but it's apparently it's, it's a media outlet. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> uh, they ripped a young Kansas City Chiefs fan for wearing blackface headdress and his mom says he's native american let's talk about this there's a quick video clip uh, but i want to point out I, I pulled up their twitter x there it is that's the picture i wanted to point out notice they used his picture from the side where he looks like okay he's all painted black and the the, the and there we go now he, he's got red on one side because the chiefs are black and red that's their colors go ahead katie so basically if you don't know the backstory on this one <clears throat> A uh, <clears throat> reporter, air quotes, Karen Phillips, wrote uh, an opinion piece here. That's him. Senior writer at Deadspin, claiming <clears throat> that this, they, they basically saw it on camera, this little boy, a young Chiefs fan, was putting out blackface. 
okay, if you know anything about college football, or obviously in this instance, the NFL, the Kansas City Chiefs, the people dress like their whole face. They like paint up their whole bodies. And this kid, what it appears in the photo they use was that this kid had what they thought was a whole black face. But then if you look, as we just saw from the front, the kid has a full face of red and black. And those are the colors for the Chiefs. And look at even the players are, are yeah. doing what the, the when yeah, they, they do better the not change, do the, the, the they, tomahawk, tomahawk chop or whatever it's called. They anymore. were doing that. And yes, but this guy named Karen Phillips, who just needs attention, apparently, apparently was also journalist of the year. Look at that. What? Uh, well, wanted to claim this little boy is a big old racist. And that's where we are, David, in the world today. Well, Elon Musk had a very interesting reaction on this, too. And um, and others chimed in and and they're they're just saying it's it's kind of ridiculous. It's kind of ridiculous what this whole thing is about, because, I mean, look at the, the Washington commanders. They used to be the Washington Redskins. They had to change their name because of ridiculous public pressure and the new woke and everything else. But I just read it. And again, this is me not so doing the my Chiefs, research. So are the Chiefs going to have to change their... Well, no, but I just... Re- and maybe I just read the headline, so don't quote me. I may okay. be wrong. There's a tribe that's actually going to sue Washington yep. for... to Because they want it changed back. You mean back Kansas because, City or Washington? No, Washington. Okay. We were talking since you brought up the Redskins. Because that was an actual chief and they want him back on the helmet because it would bring it attention to them so who who knows oh, but we want your opinions what do we think on this little kid who's a chiefs fan and by the way also native okay. american according to his mom uh and him what do you know just cheering for the kansas city chiefs at well, the football game uh, i like what kevin sorbo said hey no, karen phillips what kevin sorbo huh? i love kevin i know uh when you're done writing about this this kid when you're done writing this kid a big fat check, could you make up something about me? I'll use the defamation suit to fund my next movie. But the, the young man, the little boy had something to say. Play this real quick. Holden, how are you feeling right now? Um, it's okay because a lot of kids at school are getting excited, but it's starting to get me a little nervous because if they go a little bit overboard, it's a little scary. Would you like an apology? What would you like from Karen at Deadspin? You know, I I don't even want, know what to think about that. It's kind of, it's a little too late for that. Um, the damage is already done. It's, you know, worldwide. Now there's comments all over. There's, you know, disrespect towards Native Americans and towards my family. Um, we never in any way, shape, or form meant to disrespect any Native Americans or any tribes. Um, the tribe we're from doesn't even wear that type of headdress. Um, we, it, this specific headdress is, is a, a novelty piece. It's a, it's a costume piece. That's a, exactly what we had purchased it for and, and wore it for. So he is apparently part of a tribe. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Um, this is Shannon Armenta, mom, uh, saying this has nothing to do with the NFL. Also, CBS showed him multiple times, and this is the photo people chose to blast to create division. He is Native American. Just stop already. Mm. And, and then, in, yeah. So in the comments, um, people replying back. Uh, to Shannon said, I think the funniest part is that he's literally, is it Chumash? <laughs> to, is that what it's? Uh, I think Chumash. It's Chumash too. Yeah. Oh God, I'm dying. <laughs> uh, and then, emojis. and then Tawny uh, replied here saying, I was dying reading, reading all the comments on Reddit up in arms, cultural appropriation, racism. I was cracking up literally a native baby and his great uncle was an actual tribal chief. Go little bud, do your thing. You're famous now. And if you listen to Bubba, dad, in that interview, yeah. where he's like, well, Jesse Waters is like, oh, you know, what do you want? And he's all like, the apology. It's like, it's too late for that. Yeah. Meaning, cha-ching. Uh-oh. And that's why Kevin Sorbo did with the defamation yeah. stuff. So we want to know your thoughts. Uh, let us know. Lorna says she still has the original bottle of Aunt Jemima pancake syrup. Yes. I can't get rid of her face. I was hoping to keep That's mine, right. and then they turned it to pearl mining and took Aunt Jemima off the bus. Ridiculous stuff. Anyway, uh, we need to move on. Uh, still to come, we have a heartfelt story to share with you about a foster girl who went from being reprimanded in the principal's office to being adopted 
by the principal and his family. We can't wait to tell you about this young lady back in 30 seconds. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on pristine quality bedding, towels, slippers, signature pillows, and much more when you use the code EDUCATED. That's E-D-U-C-A-T-E-D, -E EDUCATED. Support this show and a great American company. Let's talk about good humanity for once. Yes. <laughs> Let's just, hold on, I'm going to just take in this moment. Yes. All right, so uh, get your tissues ready. You might, you might choke up a little, but in a good way, in a happy way. We have a story out of Kentucky where there was a middle school girl who threw a cup of yogurt in the lunchroom, and that cup of yogurt may have actually saved her life because when she then got sent to the principal's office, she was greeted with her adoption instead of punishment. Take a look at this. She said that she had thrown a cup of yogurt at lunch, and uh, I asked, well, if you were out at a restaurant, would, would you do that there? And I was like, I've never really been to a restaurant. I don't really have a family. I'm in a group home. For the first 11 years of her life, Raven says she never felt loved and was stuck living in terrible conditions. We had head lice. We had like bruises all up and down us. Our fingernails were really gross and stuff. Jason and his wife, Mary Beth, had already been through infertility attempts and fostered kids who eventually returned to their biological families. It just crushed us, so um, I, I, we made the decision, probably more so me, that my heart couldn't take another break like that. But after Jason heard Raven's story, he wanted to help her. They decided to start the process of fostering. They say that um, a mother falls in love with her child at first sight. And I can remember Raven walking into that room that day, that scared little kid, and I'm, I just knew in my heart, this is, this is what's supposed to be. At first, Raven was hesitant to be fostered by the principal, but after just one weekend visit, she felt like she belonged. The same weekend, we went and painted the room my favorite color, teal. I just like knew that everything happens for a reason. Raven had a new life, but it wasn't always easy. She had to overcome a lot of trauma from her childhood. Some she still deals with, but she's hoping to help others like her. She's studying social work at the University of Kentucky. Oh my now goodness. That's a, an wow. amazing story. Wow. I mean, you mean she threw a cup of yogurt. This is not to endorse, you know, food fights in the cafeteria or the lunchroom. Correct. Room, yeah, don't do but that. But that was an interesting catalyst yeah. in this story. And so the couple apparently were struggling with infertility and uh, they wanted to have um, another baby or children, period. And so very interesting story, meeting a need. And, and the principal, that, and look at her now. Look at that. It's that, that. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, I mean, so Jason um, Smith and his wife is Mary Beth, if you missed their names. And the fact that like Jason was principal when she was in sixth grade. Hmm. If any of wow. you have had tweens, as they're called now, if you've had boys, girls, and that's the only two options, boys or <clears> girls <throat> when they were in sixth grade, you know how, how much of an impactful time that is, how much of an yes. influential time. Yeah. And he could have been a principal and done what a principal would do. You're suspended, you're, yeah. you know, this, that, lunch, recess taken away, whatever it is. And instead, he adopts her. He, he asks the question he he brings it to her and that compassion turns into the most like impactful thing mm. you could do that's what jesus has sent us to do is to love one another yeah. right so him taking that extra step just being a yeah. human looking at a young girl who's sitting in front of him and asking the mm. question the right questions at the, the right time so um they as you know had been through the infertility attempts, Jason and his, and his wife, and that they had foster kids who would eventually return to their biological families. But it's such a, a full circle here that um, she, now Raven, is going to go in to school for social work. Yep. You know? So uh, some of you also are agreeing with us in terms of uh, the story. Uh, Lorna says, Jesus Christ loves you, hon. Jesus Jesus's love is all you need. Amen. Kathy. Hi, out Kathy. There. Hey, Kathy. How's it going? Uh, says, what a sweet story. And um, yeah, it is 
it's a pretty incredible yeah thing. i want to say hi to shauna over on rumble hello from north florida and hello to you thank you for watching and it reminds me uh, james 127 is a verse in the bible that that exemplifies this it, it, it's it has the idea that true religion is to care for the widow and the orphan and also to keep oneself from being polluted by the world but the first part of that to truly care for those in need widows orphans and this is a perfect example of this couple you know taking in this young woman yeah um completely unplanned but this morning because i'm you know a couple 10 days behind in my bible study <clears throat> for the year guess what i i read James, chapter, James one. chapter one. Oh, that's funny. There's James chapter one through, well, the whole, all of James. Wow, what a quinky dink. What a quinky dink. All I'm right. kidding. I'm kidding. Like, well, we know. All right. <laughs> well, we've got our uh, latest Babylon Bee headlines coming up. So get ready. Get your opinions ready. Get those typing fingers ready to choose what you think is going to be the top headline of the week. Stay with us. If you have a smartphone, tablet, Roku, or Apple TV, consider downloading the Freedom Project media app. It's 100% free and includes all of our weekly shows, plus lecture series, archive programs, and award-winning animated videos for families like the Presidential Minute, Battles of America, and Heroes of the West. Don't rely on the social media giants to keep you informed. Simply download the Freedom Project media app from your app store and allow notifications. And we'll let you know when a new video is ready. Before we wrap up the show for today, let's take a look at everyone's favorite satire site, The Babylon Bee. Here are this week's top five Babylon Bee headlines. Okay, we've picked our favorites. Katie Petrick has not seen these, so her reactions will be authentic. And um, what do you call that? Not uh, planned. She's unplanned. Real. Unplanned reactions. I'm real. So I'm let's real. start with number one. Journalists condemn Little Leaguer for wearing 12% blackface. <laughs> okay. Next, number two. Musk to put Cybertruck's bulletproof armor to ultimate test with trip through mm -hmm. downtown Chicago. Number three, Disney awarded defense contract after producing more bombs than Lockheed Martin. <laughs> number four. Take a pause, take a pause. Number four, CDC fights waning vaccine interest by sweetening pot Ooh. to two donuts per jab. Yes. And finally, Democrats nominate fallen national Christmas tree <laughs> for presidential run. Okay, now this is going to be really hard because there's a couple in here that are, they've got to be tied for <laughs> this week's favorite. But look, okay, okay. so if you're watching on Facebook Live or Rumble, you guys pick number one, two, three, four, or five. Quick review number one, journalists condemn Little Leaguer for wearing 12% blackface. Number two, Musk to put Cybertruck's bulletproof armor, to, you know, going through downtown Chicago. Number three, Disney awarded defense contract. Mm -hmm. After producing more bombs than Lockheed Martin. Number four, CDC fights waning vaccine interest. Uh, two donuts per jab. That's, that's um, and number five, Democrats nominate fallen national Christmas tree for presidential run. What does that say about I, those uh, <laughs> running for president? Anyway, uh, on the Democrat side anyway. So uh, Lorna says number five. And then and then she says number two. Lorna is changing her mind over there. I, it does go fast, Lorna. Sorry. Um, I, number five is just encompassing of everything that has happened with our country in the, the fallen past Christmas few years. Tree. At least they I, call I, it a Christmas tree. Ooh. Well, that's because of Babylon Bee is actually oh, the one who wrote okay, it. It's the, the Babylon Bee. The fallen uh, pine right. tree. What I don't even know what variety. Did, did the pine tree identify as a certain thing? Do we know what the, the, pine the tree, tree identifies as? Because if we're not using the proper is it, pronouns. Is it, I, I thought a spruce could, be a, spruce? could oh. be a Christmas tree, spruce. too. Oh, sorry. See, spruce I, is a different color. I miss... miss Blue spruce. Miss, right? <laughs> okay. Mislabeling the tree. Right. I do not apologize. I'm going with number five because it is just, all again, all-encompassing. And you might as well put that Christmas tree up. It smells nicer. It's probably more functioning. 
I mean, it falls down. It, it, it's, it's fallen down fewer times than the president has. So does that not mean everything? Um, Autumn Julia on Rumble says number two. I'm going to go with, drum roll please, number four Ooh, because... Yes. Yes. They had, oh, think, think back to COVID all the way back to, to 2019 and 2020. They had to bribe us. They have to put up so much propaganda. Hollywood celebrities were doing commercials, selling different jabs. They were trying to they're promote still all still doing the, it. And they're still doing this nonsense. They're giving away free whatever products wherever you go to just get the vet. Come on and get, get your free, <sighs> just to entice people. We've never seen this in any other time in American history where something like a vaccine or a, uh, a health, um, you know, what, what am I trying to say? A remedy, remedy something, it yeah. is sold to you with so much propaganda, almost forcing you it, with, with the exception of physically tying you down and jabbing, jabbing something you. into yeah. your arm, but so the donuts, yeah, I, I've saw, I've well. seen free free pizza. Well, yeah, well, hey, it's like the Planet Fitness model, right? That they're probably stealing it from the Planet Fitness model, so, offering free um, bagels on Mondays and pizza on Fridays or something, whatever yeah, it is. So, right? but this is the idea, friends, yes. and, and whenever they have to push something so hard. Buyer beware. And I mean, not, not just buyer, but jabber I mean, beware. Yeah. Jabber um, beware. Just be I, careful. I do like the extra touch that Babylon B went to, though, with the uh, heart shaped donut. That, oh, chef's kiss. Beautiful touch there. <laughs> Way to be, the Babylon CDC. B. All Way right. to be. Oh, guys, uh, thanks for watching and listening, and we appreciate you guys uh, chiming in live. Um, that's going to wrap up our top headlines of the week. More satire next time. All right, we're wrapping a nice bow up on this live episode of Educated, and now maybe go wrap some Christmas presents yourself. And if you enjoy our content, also, please consider subscribing to our audio podcast and the weekly Media Blast. And we'll send you just one email every Friday. It will contain the top stories from the week. All you have to do is go to stayeducated.org. Now for uh, David and myself, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and thank you for supporting what we do. Until next thank time, you. stay educated.